Have you ever wondered how fast your MacBook can charge from 0% to 100? Does the wattage or size of your charging brick really matter? Well guys, glad to have you on here on my channel because we'll be answering exactly that. What's going on? I'm your host, the one and only, and perhaps several of you watching have seen some of my battery drain tests before. In this video, we'll be doing the opposite. Instead of draining the battery, we'll be charging the battery from 0 to 100 using two different sized charging bricks with different wattages to see just how fast charging speeds can actually be. It always sucks being stuck with the dreaded red battery symbol when your Mac gets under 10%, and many times you may have only a small chunk of time near an outlet or wall plug, so having fast charging speeds for many Mac users is of a top priority. So Mac lovers, without further ado, we're not going to waste any more time and get right into the action. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. So for this charging test, it's going to be a little quicker and more straightforward than my battery drain tests. Basically, we'll compare Apple's 35 watt dual USB-C charger versus a much larger 96 watt brick to really see if bigger is ultimately better. Jokes aside, though, I think we all can guess which will come out on top. But the real question is just how much faster will one be over the other? So basically, the way we're going to perform this test is simple. Our test subject will be the brand new 15-inch MacBook Air sitting on idle, and in both instances will be completely depleted upon the commencement of both tests. We will hook up each individual charger into the outlet and then plug the charger straight into the MacBook to allow for it to be revived. Then, for testing purposes, I'll leave the display on for us to be able to look at the percentages alongside our timer and do nothing. It'll just be sitting idle. Of course, most people don't leave their displays on while charging, so you can expect to get a slight increase to charging speeds if you happen to have your MacBook closed. But in the name of science, we left it on again for testing purposes. Okay, so first up, let's start with the 35 watt dual USB-C charger. Honestly, 35 watts, relatively speaking, is kind of weak, especially on larger Macs. Remember that charging speeds will also largely depend on how big your Mac's battery is. So of course, something like a 16-inch MacBook Pro will take much longer to charge versus something like a 13-inch Air. The 15 inches Air's official battery size is rated at 66 and a half watt hours according to Apple. But I felt it's a good baseline to use in this testing since it's not as large as the 16 inch Pro's batteries, but not as small as the 13 inch Air's. It's just like right in the middle. Okay, so let's officially plug it in and we're off to the races. Pause this video right now and comment down below in how much time you think both chargers will charge up the air from empty to full. Remember, we got a 35 watt charger and a much larger 96 watt charger, both being first party and bought directly from an Apple store. So, all right, fast forwarding just a little and we arrive at the 10% mark. 10% should be enough to squeeze out that last hour of homework or to enjoy an episode or two of your favorite show on Netflix. When we hit 10%, our timer reads 15 minutes. So honestly, not all too bad, but not the best either. I think in 2023, most people expect at least 50% within around 30 minutes. So at this pace, it won't even get close. So more time passes and we see that 28 minutes in, we are finally out of the red zone, reaching a battery capacity of 20%. I don't know about you, but already I can tell this is going to take a hot minute to reach 100%. But all right, it took the 35 watt charger 35 minutes to reach the quarter tank mark. So if you're expecting speediness in your charging, you may want to consider opting for a different charger at the time of purchase, because I don't know about you, but as a video creator, 25% only gives you a couple hours to work, if that. Okay, so as we approach the hour mark, we can see that the MacBook Air is only at 41% charged. And honestly, I was kind of let down by this. I would have bet money that it would have been scraping 50% at least, but nope. It still has 9 points to go before we can officially say that the MacBook Air is half charged. So how much longer do you guess it'll be until it's at 50%? 10 more minutes? 20? Maybe even 30? 
Well, truth be told, it wasn't that much longer. The answer was only 10 more minutes, for a total charge time of around 70 minutes before it reached half tank. Again, you be the judge, but for me that's really not cutting it at all. And so now, we'll fast forward a bit because 50% should get you to about half a day's worth of productivity. To be honest, by then you should be able to find an outlet or charger, or at least I'd hope so. But ladies and gentlemen, you'd be surprised at how long it took for it to reach 3 quarters tank. We're 1 hour and 48 minutes in, nearly 2 hours, and it's only to 3 fourths tank at 75%. Guys, let me know what you think down below because to me, this is taking way longer than expected. Granted, I should have known better because after all, this is a measly 35 watt adapter, but still, I was expecting a lot better. All right, let's fast forward to 90%, and it achieved this in 2 hours and 12 minutes. We're nearing the finish line, but it's not over till it's over. We must get to 100% to make this test valid, so let's fast forward again. Now, mind you, this charger took for a f***ing ever hanging on to 99%. It's like it's infatuated to that number because it just wouldn't let it go. It took a while, but finally, at 2 hours and 53 minutes, the deed is done. It finishes challenge charging from 0 to 100%. Now, of course, if you charge overnight, this realistically shouldn't matter, but still, if you're on a time crunch, this is around the time you should expect, nearly three hours to charge a 15-inch MacBook Air from empty to full. Crazy, right? Okay, but now we switch gears, and now again, our 15-inch MacBook Air is once again dead and has no battery left in the tank. We plug in our 96 watt adapter, which is attached to this extension cord, which used to be included with MacBooks, but now, of course, is sold separately. Shout out Tim Apple. So let's attach the MagSafe, and the MacBook becomes revived relatively quickly. So now it's off to the races. Remember, the 36 watt charger took 15 minutes to charge up 10%. How quickly do you think this 96 watt charger will get the job done? Short answer, much quicker. Check it out, in just 6 minutes, the 96 watt charger has now charged up to 10%. Now that's what I'm talking about, this is considerably faster, and guys, it's just gonna blaze through the first few percentages, as only in 13 minutes it now reaches 20%. Pretty crazy. So in essence, the 96 watt charger more than doubled the charging capacity versus the 35 watt charger even shaving off a few minutes. Pretty impressive results so far. And as you'd expect, it didn't take much longer for the charger to get the MacBook Air back to one fourth capacity. 16 minutes in and it's already at a quarter tank. This already should tell you everything you need to know. These charging speeds are way faster when being compared head to head versus the much smaller 35 watt charging brick. Alright, we must keep going though. Remember that the 35 watt charger brick at the hour mark was only at 41%. But I suspect this 96 watt brick will be way farther at the hour mark and lo and behold, I was right. At 33 minutes, the 15 inch MacBook Air is already at half tank. Whoa. These are crazy gains over the dual 35 watt brick. The dual 35 watt adapter was only at 41% at the hour mark. Okay, we're seeing solid results. Let's keep using some editing magic to fast forward to the 3 4th tank mark and let's just see how long it takes the 96 watt brick. Okay, dang. Guys, in less than an hour, 53 minutes to be exact, the 96 watt brick has now charged the 15 inch MacBook Air to 75%. In just 53 minutes, this is absolutely a fantastic trade-off. Three-fourths tank is exceptional to allow you to get through any and all of your demanding tasks, including watching your favorite episodes of It's Always Sunny on Hulu, if you know you know. So alright, at this point the 96 watt brick may finish all of this in 90 minutes. So let's fast forward to 90% and we're only at 1 hour and 14 minutes. We're now nearing the finish line and just seeing these results I'm really impressed, especially when it comes to MacBooks which have enormously sized batteries compared to other electronics within Apple's ecosystems like the iPhone or Apple Watch. Now, this part surprised me because, once again, I don't know what's up with these chargers, but they love being stuck at 99%. Like, this charger was stuck stuck for several minutes. I'm just staring at it, waiting for it to hit 100. But then it eventually did reach the 100% mark, as I expected, at roughly about an hour and 56 minutes. Nearly a whole hour faster 
than the 35 watt charger. And just for reference, I've created this handy dandy chart for you guys to visualize the charging speeds compared right next to each other. It's clear the 96 watt charger is the superior one. It's just at the very end, both just kind of cling on to that 99%. It's really weird. But guys, I really hope a lot of you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below and drop your thoughts and opinions in the comment section as well down below. In the video description, you can see my affiliate links for these charging bricks. That way, if you do want faster charging speeds, go ahead and click on my links and consider picking one up. We're only about a month away from the Apple September event, and you can expect me to do a ton of coverage on the new Apple Watch Series 9, the Apple Watch Ultra 2, and the iPhone 15 series. So stay tuned, stay hydrated as always, guys, and I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.